everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Impactathon show. So very lucky to have the top overall winner of the of the recent Impactathon, the 2K project. So thank you guys for joining and hopping on hopping on the call. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go back and forth and ask each other questions. But first, I wanted to give each of you a chance to introduce yourself. Go. Um, my name is Anthea Mudanye. Um, I'm from Uganda and a second year student at Tokyo University of America. Um, so my like why for um, joining this project is like as a woman and having lived in Uganda and you know seen a lot of um, women, especially widows, having you know less access to economic stability and financial literacy, um, and kind of having like that drive to solve that problem as a woman living there was um, one of the reasons why I saw that this project was, you know, a good idea for that in that, you know, in addition to that, it would solve um, environmental um, pollution and like awareness of it thereof, and then also have a social impact as well. And one of the biggest reasons is also include the community in doing that. And, you know, this, the Toke project was, you know, a combination of um, all of the four of our passions for um, solving different, you know, problems that we see. And I think, um, you know, after listening to um, the Hamza, Anthony and Emmanuel Wise, you'll um, see how we all, you know, contributed to joining um, like our passions to ensure that, you know, we come up with an idea that could incorporate all of that and be able to make a social impact. So my name is Hamza, Hamza Ibrahim. I'm from Accra in Ghana, and I'm also currently a sophomore at Soka University of America, um, having um, combined interest in economics and finance and uh, data analytics. And um, for me, one of my passions that really um, sustains my interest in these um, fields is um, studying to have an impact. So for me, I'm very interested, invested in issues of gender equities around the world. And that has been because of my background growing up in uh, rural urban Ghana and um, seeing um, women always left at the bottom of the, the spectrum, be it the income spectrum or the social equity spectrum or um, the leadership spectrum in um, different Ghanaian societies. So um, having a project like this that attempts to um, solve um, that attempts to solve access to income and access to basic necessities for people who are very deprived and uh, very vulnerable in society like widows was uh, was like a wake up call for me to really make a change um, with all our plans. And um, I believe one thing that makes um, this project like touch, touch our hearts and really come home to us is the fact that we are all, um, we've all grown up uh, on the African continent and um, we've seen how these issues are widespread and that we are very determined um, to make a change. And um, um, Anthony and I work for a nonprofit organization called Lead, Lead for Global Development. And that has been um, one primary objective of that um, nonprofit to help out um, marginalized voices um, in whatever way we can. Hi, everyone. My name is Anthony. And I'm a sophomore at Tsuka University of America, studying liberal arts with a focus on the social and behavioral sciences. I am part of the Turkey team. And, you know, my determination to be a part of this amazing team has been informed by my passion for environmental protection. As Hamza talked about, coming from Ghana, we've seen a lot of the detriment associated with um, the widespread pollution we see in Ghana and even around the world. And, you know, seeing these damages motivated us to join the League for Global Development, which has provided a platform for us to encourage um, other Ghanaian youth to be involved in their communities and, and to, 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 to actively take part in initiatives that um, contribute effectively to the prevention of environmental poll um, you know, pollution in Ghana and beyond. And it is with this passion that I have decided to join this amazing team and work on this project um, to, to use, you know, banana, um, the banana plants to, 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 as the means to solving a very critical environmental, you know, problem. And for me, I see this opportunity as um, one that will enable me to merge my interests in business and entrepreneurship with my passion for 
reduce an environmental pollution. And that is why I'm so excited to work together with my teammates and make this impact. Thank you. So now let's actually jump into a little bit of the idea and then we'll kind of maybe go back into like learning other things about it. Um, so we were actually planning to use the pseudo stem and not the actual banana peel um, to make um, fabric out of it. Um, so we've seen it um, done in like different countries, but it's mostly produced in India because um, I think bananas are, you know, like the top most, um, I think they're very plenty more in India. And then um, Uganda is like the second most, um, you know, producer or it's one of Uganda's staple foods. And so that being um, one of the like driving factors for, you know, thinking of using bananas is that widows, um, which is our target labor force, um, mostly have, you know, banana plantations as their source of income and they're, you know, into farming and um, taking care of like the land that their um, like hu husbands had owned before they passed away. Um, and so we came up with the idea of using that um, to their advantage and um, research how we could, you know, incorporate that into like the fashion field and the environment and then um, we found out that the pseudo stem could actually be used to make fabric um, and then tackled all the like problems that came with it like um, like production and using too much water and environmental pollution and you know came up with you know that idea to be able to um, employ them and give them, you know, a source of income, economic stability, and financial literacy while solving all these other problems. Yeah, and uh, to add to what Antia said, I think one essential part to look at is the fact that um, the banana fibers are very eco-friendly and um, very environmentally sustainable because um, the, the fibers are biodegradable, which means that um, they are easily broken down by microorganisms into essential minerals into the soil rather than um, being left there on the land and um, struggling to decompose and um, ultimately emitting um, carbon emissions which uh, pollute the environment. So I think that's one very essential factor that we looked at that would help not only our market um, because it would be um, less costly to dispose of these fibers because they decompose naturally, but also for the environment because it would help reduce the rate of carbon emissions. And I think one thing that also is um, very, important determining factor was the amount of water that um, banana need compared to cotton. And we see that um, cotton um, needs, um, consumes a lot of water for conservation and harvesting, but with bananas, they can grow without that amount of, that amount of water. And um, also the chemical intervention that um, cotton fibers need to grow and to be harvested to process it into, into yarns um, and to make uh, fabric uh, also very consuming. And as compared to banana, they don't require that much um, chemical intervention. So we think those are some of the potential reasons that could help um, widen our market and um, make a very positive impact on the environment as we expected. So I was just curious to ask, like, but based on your like experience and interactions with like previous impact on participants, I was wondering like, are there some things that you've noticed or like a trend that keeps like potential social entrepreneurs from succeeding you know, like going on to the next level or like fulfilling their um, potential for social impact? Yeah, that's a very, very good question. I think sometimes it can happen where, um, you know, Impactathon is a catalyst. It gets people really excited. You turn off a lot of other things just to focus. Some of that momentum is harder to sustain outside of an Impactathon. So I think that can be a challenge. So I think the fact that you guys have multiple people and that you're thinking about the next program, you know, that or you're, you're now continuing on to the next thing, then you can at least have some goals to, um, to you know, to keep reaching. So I would say, yeah, like just having simple goals to keep, you know, during an impactathon, you can do a lot of things because everybody is working on it. Someone's working on slides. Someone can be calling up people. But once you get out of that, not to have the expectation that it's always going to be like that. So almost finding that maybe every once in a while you join something like an impactathon to keep that really strong momentum going. But if it gets 
quieter, then instead of stopping, just kind of maybe simplify what you're trying to achieve. So maybe just instead of achieving, trying to achieve three or 10 things, can you at least get one thing done, you know, and so it keeps you still moving forward. So that's what I would say, because I think going from, you know, 100 miles an hour, which is something like at, by the end of Impactathon, you feel like you're moving that fast, then to going to zero, it can, it can feel like you've just stopped, you know, so just finding somewhere in between is something I would say. Yeah. Um, and that brings me to a question for you guys. So what's next? I, uh, we talked a little bit before we started recording, but now you've come out of this and what are you guys going to do to, you know, keep the idea and the momentum going? So I think uh, one initiative we took was um, participating in the UCI um, uh, entrepreneurship competition. And that is um, supposed to help us not only get seed funding, but also expose us to um, criticism and um, potential um, ideas we could get for our project because um, at these competitions we get very detailed feedback and that would help us improve the feasibility of our project. Um, I think our next step is to also reach out to potential investors and we are widening our market right now to um, anyone who is um, interested in um, helping the world alleviate some of its environmental problems or also solving problems of gender equity. So, we are spreading out our, our wings and hoping to attract as many investors as we can. We started reaching out to um, judges from the Impact Atom project we just had at Soka, and we are hoping to also um, have an impact or make a very valuable impression on the judges we meet at uh, UCI competition. And hopefully they can invest in um, the idea that we are planning to nourish and planning to um, bring to the world. Yeah, we're also planning to do more research about um, the textile that we are planning to produce and how to target our labor force and kind of how to, you know, get our business started. Uh, we're also looking into, you know, making or having like a prototype for which, you know, to test out like the market and just the material and the services that we plan to provide as well. So I know like drive is like an important factor for social entrepreneurs and um, I would also I would also say that you're a social entrepreneur and I also want to ask like what makes you so passionate about like the Impactathon series and just ensuring that it's a success and like a lot of um, the participants are able to you know move on to um, the next level in the projects that they come up with. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I had, um, I moved around a lot growing up in my life. I was often the person that is the new person that would always appreciate that ambassador, that person that would say, hey, come learn more about this or meet some friends here. Or And I think it kind of has been part of my personality that I love making, like kind of supporting people uh, as they're kind of learning something new. And when I started learning about social entrepreneurship from my legal lens and others, I just felt like, it could easily feel like you're not allowed, like you, like you don't know enough or you don't know the right people or you didn't go to the right event. And that's just, I don't, I don't believe in that. I kind of feel like it's really important to, um, to like invite everyone in and, and kind of make it actionable because like even for each of you, your experience in, in where you grew up is, is powering this idea that you have now. It's connecting dots, you know? And so, it's we always want to empower voices so i think that's for me rather than having i love the idea of, of what you're working on but for me that idea of what i wanted to create was less clear but for me being able to guide people and support them through was like i had a clarity around that so i really am a believer and you may remember this from Pactathon of like how will you test something how will you get something in someone's hands so anthea you mentioned this but now i'm gonna i'm gonna challenge you as someone who really wants you to succeed like this is all an amazing idea using the pseudo stem of a banana to create, you know, textiles that will help women. But how will you actually get a textile like this in your hand? Or have you already, you know, based on some something that you've seen, you know, out there? Because I want I want you guys to get this out of the theoretical and into something that is like that is actual. So that's my kind of question slash challenge. Um, for you, yeah, for you guys to, to, and I'm sure you're talking about that internally as well. Yeah, um, yeah. So, uh, like Anthea mentioned, there are a couple of enterprises that have started out, started working on this project. Um, but the basic plan is to have a banana plantation and um, 
harvest the studio stems and there is a machine that actually processes the yarns that are harvested from the studio stem. So you believe um, where the, the target labor force, which is the widows would come in, would be the harvesting of the, the studio stems, which we believe um, is an essential skill that will take them um, through training for them to be able to do that very efficiently and uh, very effectively. And then um, the machine we are estimating will be able to um, produce a good amount of, um, yeah, like process a good amount of yarns every day. And then the next step would be connecting with uh, major um, textile processing factories and, and processing industries in Uganda. Um, so we want to start our market very small in Uganda and then expand it gradually to major fashion houses and in, in Europe and in the US. So I think that is a very critical step, actually getting these um, fashion influencers and um, fashion corporations to be interested in um, buying out our yarns and using them for fabric processing. So um, that is one critical step I believe we are at right now. And um, for the remainder of the steps, like Anthea said, we have people on the ground who are willing to um, test out the prototype and are willing to um, expand our markets and send out information to people who are interested in um, either working for us or potentially buying um, our product. Yeah, and I just wanted to add, like, um, my mom's really big on farming, so she, we have, like, a banana plantation that we have access to. Um, so I was, you know, planning on having um, or asking her, rather, to, you know, um, help us in that area of, like, getting the prototypes, so kind of um, getting a few uh, pseudo stems there to test out and maybe kind of um, reach out to like friends or family of people nearby to see if they would be willing to purchase um, like something like that. And just to see if there's like a market for it or how the uh, product actually will turn out. Well. If there is a word to describe how you see this next year coming up for the, for the 2K project, for this particularly, can you each just say a word of how you're feeling about, about kind of continuing on this, on this uh, project? I'm very, uh, very excited and um, I have this uh, sense of accomplishment that is sustaining me um, from Soccer's Impact that one that if we're able to make it through nine teams and that means that the judges had seen some elements of visibility, some elements of impact, some um, elements of capability in us and I believe um, that is what should sustain us through the UCI competitions and other pitches that we plan to attend in order to get um, um, investors and also um, let the world see that this is something that is um, that is needed right now because the the environment is is not um, it's not an element that can that can wait for us to um, to be to become conscious. It, it's an action we need to take right now. We need to start working on um, ensuring that the environment is safe um, for us all. So that is one thing that is driving me. Um, I would also say exciting because. Um, well, right now we're just, you know, starting out and we're not sure. This is the first time that I think all of us have ever done or thought about like something like this and um, just, you know, trying to um, learn more about what it means to kind of get into an idea that you just came up with in a short amount of time and making sure that it has, you know, all the factors that it needs to be able to run successfully will be, you know, something that we're all going to be um, like having to learn as we go as well. So, you know, I'm just like excited to kind of get into that and, you know, in the future be able to um, uh, base, uh, be able to grow the project or, you know, do something similar that will make a, a, a social impact as well. I agree with my teammates. I'm enthusiastic about what we have ahead of us. It's a lot of work and, and you know, undoubtedly, because I, I believe that um, should we want, you know, our projects to be a success, we need to put in a lot of work, tremendous amount of work. And, and I'm excited about that. I am ready for that. And I know my teammates are too. So I envision us, you know, working hard, doing extensive research, reaching out to people from different backgrounds, um, getting our prototypes done, and getting our product into the market and then making the impacts we seek to make. Huge congratulations. Um, and I mean, I feel like if you are successful, you in so many fronts, like as 
in creating a business which could um, impact your own careers in like the impact that you'll create that could impact societies and in the waste that you could divert which could you know reduce like some of what's in landfills like in so many ways this could be really impactful so i'm all wishing you guys all the best and yeah definitely be staying in touch as well <laughs>